gay, 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 gay. Just right over there. I had a really high energy set, but that guy just blew it for me, so I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I, um, I grew up on Long Island, but I've been living in the city. Thank you, thank you. For about 10 years, I've been living in the city. The first place I lived was Harlem. And, uh, yeah. 145th Street is true, and I know you're thinking, this guy must be crazy. Harlem? It's probably what the three guys who bug me were thinking. <laughs> Don't worry, though. I got a couple of high-pitched squeals in before I went down into the fetal position. <laughs> but you know what's funny about New Yorkers? They don't care the questions they'll ask you when you tell them. One guy comes up to me and he goes, oh, where's your door wired shut? It's like, you know, I told him the whole story and he goes, he thinks about it. And this is the best follow-up question he can come up with. Uh, how much money did he get? <laughs> I don't know, $40? That's not so bad. Uh, I ate through a straw. These are the same people who ask a woman who got raped. Was he cute? Did he look like somebody famous? <laughs> oh, Billy Baldwin, which one is he? Flatliners? Oh, you could have done much worse. <laughs> But I'm not going to say that all New Yorkers are insensitive and, and, and not big-hearted, because the other day I was, on, I was in the subway on the platform, and I dropped a quarter. So I'm just about to go and, and pick it up, and some good-hearted New Yorker raced over, stepped on it, and swooshed it over in my direction for me. I, I mean, I was really touched. So I didn't know what to do, I, so I offered him some gum, and then I spit it at him. So. So. I've been married for um, three and a half years now to a, thank you, to a, a beautiful woman from Jamaica. And um, when we walk on the street holding hands sometimes, which we don't do that much because it's weird, uh, <laughs> a lot of people still stare. And I tell myself, you know, in this day and age, it's weird, but I really think that some people are just not used to the idea. They're a little uncomfortable with the idea of an interracial couple. But I kind of, a little part of me says, I just think you're uncomfortable with the idea of you walking with an attractive woman of any race. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, you know, we've been, we've been together for a while and we, and we do want to eventually have kids, so we're, we're talking about it. And she's really sweet. She says that she doesn't care what we have. But I, I kind of like to have one of each, you know, one black, and one white. <laughs> I heard a story. And she's, she's really, really romantic, too, which I, I'm not so good at. Like, she goes to these, um, what is the story again? Oh, yeah, Papyrus. She gets me these wonderful cards every time there's a special occasion, and she customizes them, and she does all this great stuff. And I just go to Hallmark with a pre-printed card, and I just write on the bottom, Errol, I'm your husband, and all I approve this message. <laughs> I feel like that's enough. So um, it's still taking me some getting used to the, the whole concept of being with the same person for the rest of my life. And I admit I have my, my weak moments, like um, we were at a party recently, and there was a really attractive black woman there, and she caught me staring at her. Yeah. And she said, you know, that's very disrespectful. And I said, you know, technically that's not disrespect. That's... Um, that's customer loyalty. <laughs> you know? If you ever divorced me, I explained, or mysteriously disappeared, I would, I would marry another black woman because that's how much I love you. <laughs> she wasn't buying that. But, um... I do admit that I'm romantically challenged, and like every red-blooded American, American man, yes. I take my, my romantic cues from, from jewelry commercials. There's one in particular that I think is perfect, and I decided I would try to imitate it. You know the one where um, the, uh, the guy creeps into his sleeping wife or mistress? <laughs> With a, with, a, with a beautiful diamond necklace. It must cost a fucking fortune. With that song playing. How do I tell you that I love you? You know the one. 
<laughs> so I decide I'm going to replicate this, this, this wonderful gesture. So um, I don't have the money for that, so I decided I'd buy the most expensive belly button ring, <laughs> diamond belly button ring that I can afford, and I got her all liquored up. <laughs> and I put on the song that I thought, uh, the only one I had was that one, um, James Blunt. You're beautiful, you're beautiful to me. So I got it, so she's all liquored up. And I creep up, and I put it on, saw your face, it. so I put it on, and she struggled. There was a little bit of struggling, but I got it on, and she looked down, and, and a tear was running down her eye. It was so beautiful. <laughs> and she said to me, she just barely got out the words, I was thinking about getting it pierced anyway. <laughs> and that's romance. Thank you.